All right, here we are for day three. Welcome, welcome back. Uh, yeah, it feels, it still feels weird to be doing this again, but I'm excited to be here. Excited to be uh, chatting with you. Um, I, I'm trying to uh, run into these videos with a little more organizations. I've got three topics we're gonna run through. Uh, one is just kind of that first check-in for how is day three of taking action going. So let's go ahead and jump to the spreadsheet, ladies and gentlemen. Um, okay, so uh, we have record a video, um, which I guess now, well, that we can check off for day three. Uh, 15 minutes on a stationary bike, managed to pull in a whole 3.1 miles rather than three, so pr upward progress from yesterday. Um, I have this, I'm having this issue where um, it is difficult for me, so I have short legs for my height. Um, and so the, <laughs> the result is that if I have the, so I'm trying, I'm messing with the seat height and trying to figure out the right thing. So a lot of times if I'm sitting on bar stools or if I set the seat too high on the stationary bike, um, it cuts off circulation. I also have very, very large thighs, uh, which we talked about yesterday. Um, but cuts off circulation in my legs. So I can't have the seat too high, but if the seat is too low, then I'm just sort of crunching up into my groinal area, which is not particularly pleasant. So I'm trying to find that happy balance, but um, still fairly uncomfortable. I'm hoping that's just gonna get better with time. I mean, it's been two days, well, I, I did stuff on, on day one. I just didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't part of the, wasn't part of the list of, of habits. Um, but anyway, uh, another habit that I'm adding is drink a glass of water. And this goes back to the idea of um, every day I'm going to try and add a habit or evolve a habit. Um, this is probably not going to stay at drink a single glass of water, but you know, we're going to start it there. And so then maybe at some point, rather than add habit number 11, we'll just go back and say, all right, we're going to change this to drink two glasses of water or whatever it is. Um, you know, the stationary bike one, maybe that evolves to a longer time, or maybe it evolves to like either do extra, either either do stationary bike or go running. Love to go running. Um, <laughs> I, I, it probably would not be the healthiest for me to go running right now. I could go walking, um, but it's also very, very cold. I don't have a coat that closes around uh, my voluptuous form right now. Uh, so that would be a problem to solve first. Um, anyway, that's that. Um, as far as actions go, um, the task for yesterday was to laminate uh, new handle blanks um, for a frame saw, and actually we'll we'll get back to that in a little bit. Uh, today I'm keeping it really really light. the The goal with these is uh, really to think about. Well, no, I'll, I'll get into that in a sec. Uh, today I think I'm going to keep this crazy crazy easy, and it's just going to be remove <laughs> painter's tape. Uh, and I'll give you the context for this. Um, the, so we we bought this house um, about uh, coming up on three years ago, um, and we were excited about it. Um, I had I had a couple of videos that I had posted around the around that time where I was setting up actually this uh, home office workshop area thing, uh, studio whatever it was going to be, um, and I put down uh, some flooring, uh, which was great. <laughs> so uh, some tongue and groove. Uh, uh, faux wood flooring and stuff, and we had uh, water come into the basement, and it got all under the flooring, um, and basically had to tear the whole thing up and get rid of it. Now the stuff that I've got down here now is plastic that's more designed for garages and stuff, and it actually has um, tunnels underneath, um, so the stuff can can air out if there's water that comes up from the concrete, um, and so it's fine. Um, <laughs> but when we actually flooded, we had um, I called a flood removal or flood treatment place. I had, you know, a dehumidifier running and stuff and had already shot backed up as much water as I could. Um, and they came in and they said, yeah, well, you know, we would chop back the water. We would use a dehumidifier. Uh, we'd probably tear out all of these cabinets and, uh, you know, cut into all of these walls and try and check all the insulation and maybe replace the insulation. If not, patch the walls back up again. I said, all right, well, what's that going to cost? Said, well, about 15 grand. I said, uh, okay. But, but I've already done most of the stuff that needs to get done, right? Like, yeah. Um, and basically what they said is that the most of that cost, I think, was going to be renting the uh, industrial dehumidifiers that they'd have like seven or eight of them running down here. And I'm like, well, yeah. Um, anyway, this was years ago. Uh, but the other thing that they did is they went and they scanned behind the walls to where they sensed uh, they had some sort of detector that detects water behind the walls um, as they had marked it with painter's tape. Um, they said, all right, well, if you're not going to have us do stuff and at least go through uh, with a spade bit and a drill and drill some relief holes uh, behind the uh, 
that's uh, behind the trim. Uh, so I pulled the tr all the trim off of all the walls and drilled holes every foot or so um, throughout the entire basement. And uh, we've, uh, we've, we've not had any water since. Um, and there's no smells of mildew or anything, so I think we're good. Uh, but there's still some paint, uh, painter's tape up there that's just like that reminder of like, oh, remember how the, <laughs> how the basement flooded? And you know what? We're just going to get rid of that. Uh, the whole point of these actions is not necessarily to do things that are difficult, uh, but to do things that are going to make the next day a little bit better and not going like, oh yeah, forgot about that. And having that constant reminder will be helpful. Um, I'm sure we've got... <laughs> Um, more intense activities uh, to tackle on future days, but that'll be where we're at for there. Cool. So that is the check-in. Um, I think one of the things that I've been thinking of, um, you know, if you play, uh, for those of you who play video games, and now that's that's not all of you, but uh, one of my favorite categories of video games are, are incremental games, um, whether that's uh, mod and Minecraft type of stuff, or Factorio, uh, or Kittens game. It's a really great. Uh, <laughs> it's a really great game, honestly. Um, but one of the themes is that you always you start off with very few activities you can actually do, um, and then by doing those activities, you uh, unlock the ability to do more things. Um, so, Vectorio, you're, you're sort of hand mining for some resources, and then you're able to get those resources to build conveyor belts to get those into machines and whatever. Um, and over time, you're able to sort of build up this... Uh, this whole economy. I'm trying to think about, about my life in that way. And obviously I'm not starting from zero, but I'm starting from this point where as I start to build up uh, these good habits and start to build up sort of that life infrastructure, um, I'm going to be able to do a lot more. Now, the other key thing that you'll know if you play these sorts of games is that uh, you don't, <laughs> there's never a point in time where you're like, cool. All right. It's all automated and taken care of. Uh, in fact, generally it becomes more addicting and then you just end up investing more and more uh, time into it. And hopefully you reach some sort of threshold there. Otherwise you burn out and then that's fine too. Um, my goal is uh, to, to go into this whole life experience <laughs> with my eyes wide open and that, uh, yeah, I, like I'm building a frame saw so that I can more efficiently uh, cut lumber so that I can do more woodworking stuff, right? Like I am, I am building tools to build more tools to build more tools. Um, and there's never going to be a time where we sit back and say, okay, cool, we got it, we're done. Um, but it should mean that whenever we do have these setbacks or these frustrations or things that we want to build up on, uh, it's a lot easier to come back from because we're starting from a much uh, stronger foundation. So if we do need to take a week off, uh, yeah, that's that's okay, and it's not going to be, oh, geez, suddenly I'm 400 pounds, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, as, as an example. Um, last thing, I, I did end up uh, sawing some of the, um, uh, some, some new cherry wood to make the, uh, the handles for the frame saw. Um, I've recorded some video on my phone, which uh, we'll go ahead and cut to now. Okay, so what I've got over here, I've got this rack of assorted wood. Um, a lot of this is, um, there's a great site for folks in America, uh, Woodworkers Source and they will FedEx you um, pretty darn amazing uh, lumber in a way that I can't get from big box stores, not that I'm actually going to big box stores these days. Um, what I need though, um, as I mentioned in the last video, uh, I went ahead and royally screwed up uh, the handles uh, for this frame saw that I'm working on. And actually, this is the other one. Um, but when I had gone in to uh, chisel the mortises, gone through uh, with a chisel like this, which is basically a wedge that's going to split the grain. Not only that, um, I went, well, of course, I, yeah, I was doing it this way. That's why. Yeah, actually, I think you can already see it's starting to split. Um, but in addition to that, I was uh, basically doing this in the vice because I've already started to shape the, the back of these, uh, which means that a lot of the energy transfer when you go ahead and whack it um, gets kind of lost and you just get a lot of rattle and shake and stuff and it's not fun. Would it be best is to have two blanks that I can just put right on top of the workbench, clamp them uh, forward and back, um, and then do that. But in order to do that, I need to glue up some more pieces and then get that plane down to size. So um, I'm hoping I have a bunch of mahogany here. Um, let's see, there's some poplar and some red oak. I'm hoping that I still have some cherry. If I do, it's going to be under this whole pile. Let's see. That's not an elk. Like. Let's shit this out. Yeah, that's still yeah. Okay, so both of these, both of these are cherry. 
Okay, so I got the board all the way out here. Um, it's, it's pretty long, but it's actually fairly clear. There's one knot here, a little bit of break out there, but this is a nice, this is a nice board. Um, I also got the template out. Um, the actual kit uh, for this frame saw, meaning the, the saw plate and uh, some uh, steel tubing and, and whatnot to make it all, make it all work. Um, it's provided by uh, Bad Axe Toolworks, um, which is a company, uh, is a company I suppose it's a person, um, uh, in Wisconsin, makes um, great stuff. Um, anyway, template came with this, um, and unfortunately looking at this, this was just not quite enough for me to get four out of here. I'm sure if I were better, <laughs> um, there'd be some way for me to do something like this and then stagger it like this to minimize the waste, but I am just not. <laughs> That's smart. So what I'm going to do uh, is cut off two lengths of this and then just uh, accommodate the plan, plan on having some extra waste. Um, now, I did not have, um, you know, these are these are rough sawn uh, edges, uh, so I am going to go ahead and plane those down. Uh, but first, what I'm going to do is just, and I'm just going to be really hacky about this because I'm just going at it with a, with a handsaw anyway. Uh, it doesn't need to be particularly perfect. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and strike a line vaguely like that. That's that's a line. Hmm. I'll go ahead and shift it down. Do that. Just give myself enough extra to work with. And yeah, that should be that should be fine. Um, one of the reasons for making this frame saw is that I can start ordering uh, wood and not feeling like I'm gonna end up wasting all of it because I end up with all of these huge amounts of off cuts that I never do anything with. So what I'm gonna do, uh, what I gotta do now is basically cut from here and then I'll go ahead and split this in two. At that point, we'll go ahead and rip them down uh, the length. So we end up with four blanks. Um, and then what I wanna do is laminate them together. Now, last time I made the mistake of sort of flipping one over the other, which I believe means that the grain direction, yeah, the result was that when I was trying to plane stuff down, I was going against the grain for one of the boards and with the grain for the other board once they were glued up, which was not great. Um, so what I need now, is big crosscut saw. Um, basically what I'm gonna do next, I'll just shift this over, uh, take some handy clamps, clamp it down to the bench, and just run through it here. All right, so there we go. Two pieces, not the straightest of lines. <laughs> um, you can see, yeah, kind of a little, not, not super square, uh, but that's okay. Now the question that I'm asking myself is, is it easier to just laminate? Well, no, you know what? I said I was gonna take action. I said I was gonna have these done and glued and ready to go. Uh, I was thinking maybe gluing both of these together and then just doing one cut rather than cutting these separately. But I think on so it'll be fine. Um, I'm not gonna be super precise about a line down the center. The nice thing about doing this so wastefully um, so the bad thing, obviously, is that it's wasteful. The good thing is I've got so much extra room <laughs> that I really don't need to worry about much. So um, I'll go ahead and just draw some lines. And now, generally, one of the projects that's also on my list, wow, that is just, <sighs> no, I'm gonna do, <laughs> I'm gonna draw these correctly and put down the damn camera. Not evenly split, but linear. Um, so that's something. Um, now the question is, I can cut them one of two ways. I can either put it upright in this vise, which is tricky, I've done that, or I can use um, this shoddy workbench that I made for my son as a saw bench. Either way is kind of tricky. Um, and I get this is another reason why it's very helpful um, that I've given myself so much extra space. I think I am gonna put this upright. Although one of the challenges is this, uh, this saw, uh, has, uh, I think it's, what, I don't know, some, some low number of teeth per inch, which is great, but also, also makes it very difficult to start. We'll get this strung up in the vise and we'll see what happens. <sighs> okay, so I've been using a really ratty workbench that I made for my son as a sawhorse, or a saw bench. Whew, it is exhausting, and as you see, I cannot follow a straight line to save my life. A frame saw will actually help with this, along with a curving plane, which will basically put a deep groove all around the board before even going into cut, which is going to help guide the saw straight. You can also see it's off at an angle, a Dutch angle almost. Maybe this will be a Dutch board. Who knows? I'm going to get these <laughs> ripped up. Okay, so 
as you can see, these are not particularly straight cuts. Um, this one, I did end up ripping them uh, over on the <laughs> uh, a low uh, bench. Uh, they're not particularly straight. Um, they're even worse than this thing. Like, yeah, well, it's not terribly far off, but yeah, you can see that's not great. This one is worse, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very much, very much an angle and not a consistent one either. Um, <laughs> Practice makes perfect, I guess. Um, now, one of the things I could do would be to uh, sort of... So, what I did last time is basically I had them cut like this, and then I flipped one over on like this. What that meant is then when I go with the jack plane, um, it meant that when I'm coming across the, the grain... I don't, I don't know how to read grain. I guess... I, yeah, I think it's this way. So, this way is with the grain... No, that doesn't feel... Well, who knows? <laughs> Um, anyway, the grain direction would be one on that board and then the other direction on the other board. So when these things get glued up, um, basically no matter which way I went, I would be tearing out half of, you know, one of the boards, um, the half of the, half the piece. Now I could, um, at this point, take this, um, put these uh, boards up in the vise and get everything done. But to be honest, it is easier for me uh, to run the hand plane along thicker material anyway, um, so that I, I don't end up uh, getting off 90 degrees. So there's plenty of material, there's plenty of excess. I'm just gonna go ahead and glue things up like this. I don't particularly care uh, that there's a there's not a flat edge. We can always go ahead and plane down to one. Um, and there is so much additional material here. That we've got plenty to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and stack these on top of each other, get some glue, get them clamped up, and we'll be good to go. Uh, for tonight. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, the glue is dripping like crazy. Um, there's definitely too much glue, but you know what? I'd rather have too much glue than too little. Um, some of the glue is dripping on the floor, but you know what? It is a plastic flooring. <laughs> um, and I don't know. I went at it a little bit, but uh, it'll be easier to just let it mostly dry, and then I'll worry about it from there. Um, and then from there, I'll go at it with a hand plane and actually get some some flat reference surfaces and cut the start to shaving things, these things down. Okay, and so the goal was to get those laminated, which I did, and uh, here they are now. I managed to pull them out uh, this morning um, and uh, basically clamp them in the vise. Obviously, they were not uh, <laughs> they, they were not they were not flat uh, initially, um, but kind of went at. It's a lot easier when you've got you know one piece that's sticking up like this. It was like okay, we'll go at it with a chisel, um, just hammer off some of the waste, and then just plane down the rest. So. Um, these blanks now are flat. They are absolutely not square. So if I show you here, yeah, you can look at that. That's not, that's not the greatest, um, but that's okay. Uh, that'll be step number two. Obviously, that's not the activity that I'm prioritizing today. Maybe I'll get it done. Maybe not, but it's not the thing that I'm putting on my, on my action list. Um, and yeah, so, so I'll, I'll need to square up uh, both edges, throw it up on the, I, I need to actually empty up the trash can because you can see behind me there's a whole bunch of shavings uh in that trash can and uh, i need a little more room for <laughs> for some more shavings we'll get the thing down to uh nice thinner blanks i'll mark out where we're going to go ahead and chop those mortises get those cut in it's going to be amazing Whew. uh yeah other than that uh welcome to 2021 i hope you're enjoying it so far uh so far seems pretty good and uh i'll speak with you soon cheers <laughs>